There are three things in this world that I absolutely love. South Africa, Peri Peri and street culture. So when Nando's asked me to go to Joburg to make a doc about the street art scene, I was well up for it. A scene I discovered that was born out of 40 years of protest. I mean, I'd say South African street art's probably manifested more in the last 20 years as society has evolved. So with the Group Areas Act, you know, black people could really couldn't go into certain spaces after a certain time of the day. But, with, you know, with that dropping and the elections coming, um, particularly the city, you know, the inner city became a lot more accessible. Hey, guys. Because before that was a lot of, you know, a lot of slogans. It was more kind of, I guess, protest art and in inverted commas. Yeah. When I was a student, no one gave a shit about the art world, as it was such an elitist place. Street art came along and changed all that. Blew open the doors and let everyone into a world that was previously for the few. Artists such as Banksy, Swoon, Bleck and Abay created art that spoke to everyone, and I began documenting how street art had torn up the rule book. In 2006, I interviewed a young female street artist called Faith47, who was part of an emerging South African scene. And here I am now, in 2017, in Soweto, looking to find the story of South African street art. This film charts the rise of South African street art through a collaboration with a fresh young artist. And we discover firsthand how street art is shaping the lives of a new creative generation. I needed to find out what was firing this incredible artistic energy that has really pushed Joburg forwards as a global creative city. We're filled with people from all over the country. We're filled with people from all over the continent. If you come from a small rural area, someone's gonna be like, Joburg is a devilish place. You know what I mean? Like, you're gonna get robbed. It's already got that idea that it's like, you know, it's where we're all going and we're all gonna get money. It's the one place you really see all those worlds coming together. Then we have what we didn't have before, which is all this international influence. Then there's the local guys who are doing their thing now. Probably see how crazy that scene has become, yeah. But that's what drives the whole thing. So it's us figuring out how we fit into the world what our place is, how we're gonna speak about who we are to everybody else. I mean, in South Africa, there's like institutions um, yeah. and people's access to institutions is very limited, especially like the majority um, of the yeah. country. So with things like street art, I think it allows people to like engage, um, you know, in the form. It allows people to practice the form as well. You know, it's one of the more democratic forms um, of art production. So, uh, you know, the, the fact that it's like, you know, quite inclusive, it's, you know, perhaps is an entry point um, into um, the more fine art or other forms of um, artistic practice. Uh, my mother was always very anti graffiti and street art and oh, how, how could they do this to someone's wall, that type of thing. For me the whole thing about painting on a wall has connotations to Khoisan culture, which I talk about a lot because I think it's again something that was quite negative in South Africa for coloured people especially. But cave paintings um, and graffiti obviously just it's pretty much the same thing, it's just a way of saying that you were there. And so yeah, it's exciting now for me that fine art is, is kind of not losing its footing, but it's having to shift and it's having to change a lot um, to make provision for new people and new practices coming in. God, fine art looks down on everything. They look down on graffiti, they look down on murals, they look, what's the other thing? Uh, craft. Um, I think that South Africa, we get used to um, hoping for the best a lot and then we get very very disappointed um, and I think that that spills over into art and into protest and to all of those things. I think we the protest capital in the world. I do feel a lot of things deserve to burn. 
And it was protests that ignited the story of street art in South Africa in 1976, after police opened fire on protesting students, killing a 13-year-old Hector Peterson. The starting point of this film that I'm making is the Hector Peterson image. Yeah. It was disseminated as a, a, almost like a street, street art paste up because you were never allowed to publish that in any newspaper. Anyway. So how, do you, how important is that image? I think, look, I think the image is important in terms of it, it, it gave a real face to, face to the uprising. Yeah. Um, I think where people lived, you know, they knew what was going on and it had been going on for a while. So I think it's a great, you know, it was a great image for the rest of the world to kind of get a sense of, of really what's going on, in, going on in the country. But if you look at, if you look at the arts in general in this country, um, you know, during apartheid, there was a lot, you know, art was, art was a form of activism. It was those activists who inspired the first wave of South African street artists, who in turn paved the way for today's talent. Who would you say is going to be the poster boy or girl for uh, art design for South Africa? For me, for the first time in a really long time, I can choose a girl. I think for, for me, Karabo Poppy, she's got an attitude and an energy that is ex really exciting when last or whenever, was there really a strong black female who came through in that, in that culture? The Ayatu Cinema in the heart of Soweto was the place where imagination could escape during the apartheid years. I was eager to meet Carabo to see if she was up for transforming the now derelict cinema into a work of art. But first, I wanted to learn a bit more about the Ayatu when it was still the center of the community. Well, the reason why I'm here is get a local artist to do a big street art piece on the I2. Yeah, iconic AS, yeah. yeah. What's, your, what, what's your memories? What do you know about that theatre? Wow, that's, that's, like I say, it's an iconic. When we used to be kids, I mean, back in the day, it was even hard to even go in the pubs to really go to cinemas, yeah. you know, based on apartheid, you know, it, 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 we are not allowed. So those were like kind of places where black people could really go into and watch movies, you know. So as the kids growing up, it's like on a Saturday, you're like, wow, you, you save your money throughout the week, yep. your 50 cents, and then you're looking forward to go to AA to and watch a movie. I think my first moment discovering street art was when I was really little. Uh, hair is a very big thing in my family. So going to the hairdresser and seeing barbershop signage on the outside, I remember being really small and kind of being fascinated, especially when a new barbershop or hair salon would open up and you'd see people kind of painting the signs on the outside. I just remember my eyes just lighting up every moment I saw it. Well, I have two street artists that I absolutely love. The first one has to be Frau Issa. She's kind of one of the very first females that I saw doing a lot of street art and that kind of inspired me as well because I see a lot of um, men doing a lot of great things and being recognized for this so it's always great to see a female being just as recognized as men as well. Another has to be Faith 47 and that brings it closer to home seeing a South African female being recognized for street art. When I took Karabo to see the i we discovered that Faith 47 had also found a place inspiring and had created her future piece on the front back in the day. It was then I knew that Carabo was going to create something amazing. The beginning of the piece started with the famous Hector Peterson photograph. And in that photograph, we kind of see a narrative of lifting, but what this artwork is doing is reinterpreting that. We're taking lifting and carrying, but we are linking that to the lifting and carrying of Johannesburg and South Africa's potential. So we're looking at how together as a people, we could come together and lift each other to reach this unbridled potential that I think we have. I think what was actually quite nice about the piece was that the illustration was 
kind of revolving around a narrative of working together. And we didn't just put this onto a wall, but we were actually living that within the creation of this piece. So I think it was pretty successful what happened with us working together. And that just alludes to us working together in different aspects, what the success of that could be. So it just kind of reiterated what the piece was saying and we got to live that. I travelled to South Africa looking for street art and discovered one of the most creative communities I'd ever seen. From downtown Joburg to Soweto, I was constantly bombarded by the freshest street culture, be it art, music, food or fashion, which may be down to the fact that over a third of the population are officially defined as youth. And perhaps it was this youthful energy that made the South African street art scene one of the most energetic I'd witnessed anywhere in the world. Thank you.